Hi guys, Matt from 123MyIT here, and welcome to the channel. In this video, we will take a look at the Apple MacBook Pro 13 inch with the M2 chip. There are three different MacBooks in the MacBook Pro range. There is the entry level 13 inch, which is the model we have here today, and then there is the larger 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. Apple's latest version of the MacBook Pro 13 inch comes with the M2 processor, which has eight cores, and it also has a 10 core GPU and a 16 core neural engine. The neural engine controls the AI part of the MacBook. This entry level model also comes with eight gigabyte of unified memory and 256 gigabyte of SSD storage. Right off the bat though, I would not recommend buying this configuration of the eight gigabyte and the 256 gigabyte model. As the eight gigabyte memory becomes a bottleneck for the M2 chip, and the 256 gigabyte SSD has slower write speeds. So if you're really looking to buy this MacBook Pro, I would recommend upgrading it to the 16 gigabyte memory and the 512 gigabyte SSD. If that's looking too expensive, then there's still some really good deals on Amazon. You can pick up the 2020 model M1 MacBook Pro for $1,217 at the time of this video. I will leave a link in the card or in the below in the description. Pricing for the 13 inch Pro starts around $12.99 USD for the M2 CPU and goes all the way up to $24.99 USD for the M2 with the 24 gigabyte memory and two terabytes storage SSD. Let's take a look inside the box. First up, you'll have the MacBook Pro itself. Along the bottom, the chassis is held together by six tech screws and it also has four thin black rubber feet to improve the airflow. And on the top, you will have the standard Apple logo. In terms of accessories, in the box, you will get warranty and setup documentation, which also includes two color matched Apple stickers. Next up, you have a 67 watt USB-C power adapter. I tested the MacBook and it uses around 17 watts when charging and a max of 43 watts when doing a benchmark under heavy load. The plug of the adapter does come off and you can buy an extension cable for it. And the last accessory in the box is the USB-C to USB-C cable, which you use for charging. When you take the MacBook Pro out and you open the lid, it will guide you through the setup process. During this process, you will be prompted for Touch ID and you will have to train your finger. The MacBook power button is the Touch ID sensor and you will be asked to tap your finger to set it up. Now, this can be used to unlock your MacBook Pro, authenticate payments or authenticate passwords. If it's one thing I feel Apple never skimps on, it's their displays. The MacBook Pro comes with a 13.3 inch Retina LED backlit IPS display with a resolution of 2560 by 1600 at 220 pixels per inch and up to 500 nits of brightness. The 14 inch model does come with a better brighter XDR display though. It makes for some pretty impressive movie watching. Let's take a look. We between universes. We don't know who or what will walk through it. Wanda, what do you know about the multiverse? Viz had his theories. He believed it was dangerous. He was right. While it's a bit hard to see across the top of the MacBook, you have a 720p FaceTime HD camera with an indicator light. It's great for those conference calls. This 13 inch MacBook has not received the 1080p upgrade that the 14 inch MacBook Pro received. All the MacBook Pros come with a backlit magic keyboard and it's a delight to type on. The keys do not bend when pressing and they don't tend to wobble too much. One difference between the 13 inch model and the 14 inch model is the 13 inch comes with a touch bar. The touch bar dynamically changes to suit whatever application you are in. It allows you to control things like sound and brightness or emojis if you're in emails. The backlit keyboard is also controlled by the ambient light sensor, so it only turns on when the lights are low. Pretty cool, huh?
The trackpad is still pretty much the same. It's a force touch trackpad and it allows for precise cursor control and multi-touch gestures. The MacBook Pro 13 inch comes with a stereo speaker sound system and wide stereo sound. And while the sound is impressive for such a compact laptop, the speakers on this M2 MacBook Pro do not sound as loud as they were on the M1 MacBook Pro. Let's take a listen. On the left hand side of the laptop you have two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports which are also charging ports and then on the right you have a headphone jack. In terms of connectivity you will need to buy adapters such as this USB-C to USB 3 adapter. I will put a link in the description below if you're after this. If you need to plug in an external display this MacBook Pro M2 only supports one display up to 6K at 60Hz. The overall build quality is great and there is little to no flex on the MacBook Pro. Also the silver aluminium doesn't leave fingerprints which is great. For me I feel like it's almost the perfect size. However if you intend to carry the MacBook Pro around a lot maybe check the weight because the MacBook Air is slightly lighter at 2.7 pounds. Underneath on both sides of the MacBook Pro Near the hinge you have the air vents. The position of these vents is a nice design as it pushes the hot air out the back of the laptop away from your hands. Talking about hinges, the display hinge only folds back 160 degrees. However, other laptops go all the way back to 180 degrees. So 160 feels a bit awkward to me. Let's go ahead and run the Geekbench benchmark software. Cool. So the MacBook Pro 13 inch M2 recorded a single core score of 1946 and a multi-core score of 8962. And if we compare that with the other scores from all the other MacBook Air and Pro models, the MacBook Pro 14 inch is still the winner. When running the benchmark and while the MacBook Pro is under load, it's a really good time to check the temperatures and see where the MacBook Pro is heating up. The room I'm in has a temperature of around 25 degrees Celsius at the time of recording. As you can see here, the MacBook Pro really heats up in the middle of the keyboard to about 33 degrees. There is some clever design here, as there is no heat where you might be resting your hands and palms when typing. MacBook Pros are designed with content creators in mind, people who are video editors and music creators. And in doing so, they leave out gamers. The hardware just doesn't support gaming or at least a native install of Windows so that's something you should be aware of. So if you're looking for a gaming machine then you're probably better off going with a, a specific gaming laptop. However if you are a content creator or just prefer to use Apple products for your day to day then the MacBook Pro 13 inch is the best all rounder in terms of portability and function in my opinion. The display is very nice and the speakers are good for this size of laptop. Guys, don't forget to check out my other videos such as how to change your passcode on iPhone and iPad iPod Touch. And do me a favour, if you know anyone who might like this video, please share it with them. Hit the subscribe button and smash the bell icon.